I am Keisha Zulo, founder of the Women in Business Summit. Our virtual conference is coming up on July 30th through the 31st. We're so excited. We have an amazing lineup, including the amazing gentleman I'll be introducing you to in one second. Um, for more information, go to WibSummit.com. So I'm laughing because <laughs> it's Cornell Thomas and he's a friend of mine and it's a crack up every time we talk. <laughs> well, let yeah. me tell you a little bit about him before we go and in jump into the conversation. So Cornell is a professional conversationalist. He is an author and he's also a social entrepreneur. And he was a former speaker, keynote speaker, the first male keynote speaker at the Women in Business Summit in 2018. So, my brother, <laughs> welcome to the conversation. Oh, hola, como estas, mi, mi amiga? Um, very <laughs> great to be here, Keisha. Thank you for having me. It's an honor to be in your presence. Yes, I know it is. Okay. So, <laughs> No, I promise we'll stay on task. So the thing I, here are some things that I love about Cornell. He definitely um, is someone who can put you in the right mindset to get things done. So he is the founder of the Positivity Summit, an amazing live event. And he hosted uh, previously a virtual event due to COVID. And the thing I also admire about him is that he connects with people very easily. He's one of these people that instantly when you meet him, um, he finds that connection that you have, to, you know, in common. And then he takes it to the, the next level by making everyone in his presence feel important. And I think that is a skill. It's not something that um, everyone possesses. I love when um, I get to meet people like him who are definitely on a path of positivity, not to say the word over and over again, but someone who is interested in moving forward, in collaboration, in getting to know people, who's interested in diverse number of stories and cultivate those stories through his podcast. He, um, and I know I'm going to have you speak in a second, Cornell, but I just want to lay the foundation for the people so that they know who I'm speaking to. Um, his, I love that he shares his story of his uh, father, Bobby Thomas, who passed away. Um, I, I'm hopefully I'm okay with sharing this, Cornell. You've talked about it publicly. Um, passed away when he was about four years old, and he was in law enforcement. And there's a street named after his father. Left an incredible le legacy for his family, and also um, he talks about the great Tina Thomas, his mom. And I can completely relate to that because I also have a strong mother. And then his own family, his wife, is too beautiful kids so um and on top of that he does all of the speaking and traveling around the world and connecting like i said with amazing people so the fact that we get to have him as a special guest for a few minutes at the women in business summit virtual experience is an honor so today we're going to talk about whatever we want to talk about we're just going to let the conversation flow he's not that type of guy for me to send <laughs> um notes to and say hey cornell <laughs> This is what I want to talk about because he's likely to go left on you. So, Cornell, welcome. Thanks again for being here. Thank um, you. But I, I want to kind of kind of steer the conversation around mindset and um, a podcast a topic that you shared around hope and the five uh, stages of change due mm. to COVID. Do you remember when you do you remember that conversation you had on your podcast? Yeah, I remember the podcast, but. As you know, when I speak, I always forget what I say because I feel like I'm just the vessel. I feel like the it's divine energy that's coming through when I speak. But I do remember the five stages of changes. I believe that they are um, uh, denial, anger, bargaining, depression, and acceptance. Yes. And so the survey that I that I was you know watch or reading, I forgot what book I got it from, but they were saying that whenever you're going through some type of drastic change, it mirrors when someone finds out they have a terminal illness. And those are the five stages. The first stage is denial, where you're like, there's no way this is happening to me. This it can't be possible. The second stage is anger, which we a lot of people stay in because they're just upset that that change has to happen. It's necessary for them to move on. And then there's bargaining, which is, for me, just thinking about my injury back in the day where I was just saying, like, God, please make this not as bad as it is. I'll never take a day of basketball for granted again. And then the fourth stage, which is the obviously the most dangerous stage, which is depression. And when you get into that stage, you are in a depressed state because you have to change. The hardest thing is turning the lights on. 
which is you're in this dark place and you feel like there's no light. There's not a glimmer of hope and that's it. But what we don't realize is when we're in that fourth stage, the, the very next stage is acceptance. And if you can accept that change has to happen, change will happen. The problem, and think about it, if you diet, if you work, do a new workout routine, if you lose your job and have to get a new, new job, new relationship, whatever it is, the biggest problem is, is accepting that your routine has changed, right? Like everything is routine. Like I'm no longer going to my job. I'm no longer seeing my friends that I work with. I'm no longer in this relationship. We have a cat together. You know, like this is just the way, it's just the way it is, right? So I think it's just, under, like if I look at, you know, change as a bridge and on one side is the depression, the other side is acceptance. You know, you have to walk through the, the crap to get to the acceptance. And that's the hardest thing for humans to do is to walk through the crap and be like, I'm sick of walking through the storm. I'm sick of this. I'm not moving fast. I feel like this storm is following me around. This black crowd's following me around. No, it's just, it might take, the bridge might be longer for some of us. Mm -hmm. But at some point in time, if you fix your mindset that I know this change is necessary and I know on the other side of this depression is a better tomorrow, then you'll be able to get through it. And that's, and that's what you don't see on the news. You see right. garbage on the news, right? You see basura, mierda, that's a curse in Spanish. You see all this crazy stuff on the news and it, it takes away hope. It takes away the fact that, there, that change is possible. And yeah. that's why I don't watch it. Because when you watch it, you don't think there's hope for anything. You think that there's all the jobs and the numbers and the blah and the stats and this, that, and that's that. You're like, well, how am I still alive? Right. right. Like, who's rolling the damn Jumanji dice in the heavens and throwing murder hornets this way? You know, like, what's going on? Right. right. So it's important for us to look inside of ourselves. I have faith. I always say faith is stronger than hope. But you got to start somewhere. Right. right. You got to start somewhere. And uh, when I did Hope Floats, it was just something that it really spoke to me. And hopefully it speaks to, you know, your amazing audience. And uh, I, I'm excited. When we talked, I said, Keisha, just put me on the day. Just put me on the list. I'll, I'll speak. Because I believe and love you so much. But also, I believe and love your mission. Thank and being you. by a strong woman and, and just, my mom didn't have people like you. My mom didn't have a group of women that, that can show her support and show her love and, and pick her up on those times where she felt that she was by herself and she had no one. Mm -hmm. So the fact that, you know, being in that room and seeing 300 women lift one another up and not being that this damn Kardashian culture where we, you know, rip each other, rip women, women rip each other apart. It's a beautiful thing to see. And I, it, it shouldn't be 300 people. That's what baffles my mind. Mm -hmm. It's like, we're so brainwashed. There should be 30,000 women. There should be 50,000 women. Because if you really want change, if you really want to change the culture mm -hmm. of how women view each other, then this is where you start. You go with like-minded women that are only going to lift you up. So when, when I see there's 300 people, 400 people, I'm like, cool, but there should be 400,000 right. because these are the movement, movements that are important in terms of empowering women and moving you guys to the next level of change. And it speaks so much to your philosophy. I love the quote because I have it also um, before we even met. And it was very interesting that you have the same quote. If you want to go fast, go alone. If you want to go far, go together. And you embody that. You live that by the people you surround yourself with. And you talk a lot about just what you just said. Pause on the news because that's not where you find and get uplifted. And then surround yourself with the people who are doing something, who are moving forward. So what has been um, the most interesting or the best blessing that's come out of this COVID situation for you? Yeah, there's been multiple blessings for me, but the one, the most important one is the time I'm, getting, the time I'm spending with my kids. Uh, the fact that, you know, they're usually at school from nine to three, nine from nine to one right now, Bryce from nine to three. And then we, I have them, I'm, I'm fortunate enough thank God that my job is me, right? So I'm with them for four or five hours, but there's so many parents for their kids get home at 4.30, the parents get home at six, and then they have an hour and a half and they put them to sleep. So what, did I want to homeschool kids? Did we want to homeschool our kids? Hell no. Like that stuff was like ridiculously hard, right? But you get a routine and you appreciate the fact 
that you get this opportunity to be with your kids. I see all these memes like where the parents can't wait to let the kids off and et cetera. You know, if you have baby's kids or kids that are wild as hell, like I, I get it. But I also went and got my kids bikes a couple months ago and the, and the owner said, Cornell, we have never sold this many bikes before. That's awesome. ever, because families are getting out together, turning off their TV, getting out together and going on bike rides. Yeah. If you don't see the beauty in that, then you're missing it. Right, because you're talking, um, you talk a lot about legacy and family. And, um, you know, you mentioned a conversation that you had with Bryce about, um, you know, being he wants to be just like you when he grows up and you're saying, no, be better than. And I think um, and you shared with about your brother and um, how he looks up to you and what you've done and your father's legacy and you standing on the shoulders of, you know, the great folks who came before you. So I love that. And then through these things, like going on bike rides, it may not seem like it, but through these things and actions and spending more time, you can do that. So for, if you are a business owner in this climate, I want to talk about the business side of your work and the things that you've been able to do and develop through COVID. Um, I know what they are, but can you share with the audience some of the things? Because it may help someone else who's yeah. looking at their business no longer. Is it about widgets? It's about pencils now. Just mm -hmm. an example, guys. Yeah. Uh, can you talk about that kind of shift in your business? Well, I mean, you know, you didn't order a, a pivot or Paris shirt because you don't love me, but... Uh, the uh, reason I, the reason I put that shirt out there is yet. <laughs> it's all it's all about it's all about the pivot, right? So, the first week of Corona, or as I like to call her Rona, uh, I was flying back from Austin, Texas. I was speaking at the Humans First event, flying back from Austin, Texas, and on the plane, Keisha, I was saying to myself, "When you land, what are you going to create? How are you going to pivot?" So that two hour, three hour, whatever flight that is. As I got home, I said, you've always wanted to create an app. Now you've got time, brother. Get the videos done. Buy a green screen. Start shooting, start shooting videos. You, you want to finish your fifth book about entrepreneurship? Finish it, right? You wanted to do a positivity summit, but now you got to do it online. How's that going to look? So I started writing down all these things that I want to do. And I don't have, I mean, this is not, I'm not hanging on vision boards. Yeah. I have an action board, right? Like the words on my action board are like create make you know like things all it's like things like we got to do it we got to go mm -hmm. i feel people act like the pressure i put on myself isn't the way people define pressure like i don't put pressure on myself like oh my god i gotta get this i put pressure on myself like you were chosen for this responsibility you were chosen to be on this planet this time around to help be a part of the change that is on you, Jack. Like, you are one of them. So what the freak are you going to do? So that's the pressure I have. It's a divine pressure where it's a good, I love the feeling. I want, I want all the smoke. I want that pressure. I want to be one of the people that are like, yeah, I'm going to be one of the reasons that someone smiles today, that someone thinks differently today. Like, give me that pressure. And I know that I don't, we don't have a lot of time. A hundred years, if everything goes well, that's not a lot of time. Yeah. So while I'm a renter on this earth, while I'm renting this space, I'm going to give it my freaking all until the wheels fall off. And when the wheels fall off, I'm going to pass that baton off to my son. He's going to pass to his son or daughter and to my daughter, and they're going to run with it, yeah. right? So I just have like, you know, when I, I have this different energy because I know I was, why I was created. Your business might have to shift. Your business might have to go from widgets to pencils. It doesn't mean it has to stay there, right? right? Sometimes you just got to stabilize your damn self. And when you stabilize yourself, then you can go back to what you're doing. But you might have a new skill. You might have this side business. I'm gonna, when I go out to speak in front of people again, I'm going to have that book and the app already done. I have another layer, right? So... It's just important for you to understand. It's like, it sucks that your business is going under. It sucks that we can't do this and this. Appreciate that, more than that, but then you got to move on, right? And don't think that you can't go back to that business, right? Do your side hustle. What are you talented at? What are you good at? What is your circle doing? Maybe you can pour into their passion. What are they, like, let's make that happen, right? And then when you go back, when your money's right, you're stabilized, you want to go back to open your business, you'll have a new perspective because now you'll be thinking, when the next Jumanji Dice rolls, how will I pivot? 
Right. And yeah. like I said, all the skill sets that you would have developed in the meantime, instead of, and the thing that you said, Cornell, was stay in action. I love that, yet you have an action board because a lot of us, if I think you would agree, would spend a lot of time thinking about something, writing down, making notes, planning, but not doing it. I am fully, and I think I had to come to this place where it doesn't have to be perfect. I just got to get it done. And then I work on it. It's never going to be something again. perfect. Say that again. Say I don't know what I said. It doesn't it have doesn't to be perfect. perfect. <laughs> no, say it again, right? Because when we first started talking, this was the, the, the brunt of a lot of our conversations. You were a perfectionist, right? Like, <laughs> you were like, I gotta, I gotta get this and I gotta, and I'm like, oh, I'm, I'm putting it, I'm airing your business, right? Because it's important for people to understand, like, you're a reform perfectionist. And you are so, like, intent and focused on getting everything perfect that yeah. it wasn't getting done. Because yeah. there is no perfect, right? Excellent perfect. is achievable, but perfect is not. So just when I talk to you now and I see the growth now of how you are, where you're like, I still want to achieve to be excellent. I still want to achieve to have an amazing product. But I understand that S might hit the fan. From time to time and not everything you run events you know right you go there the day of you're like oh hell no oh, <laughs> right. hell no like but then what do you have to do you got to pivot and make something happen you gotta keep going absolutely the alternative keisha sit on your couch and cry that's the alternative that's not the alternative for me. I can't sit down and do nothing. I'm not going to suck my thumb and sit in the fetal position and be like, oh, Lord, oh, Lord. God is like, get up. Yes. God's like, you know how many people have been through way worse than you're going through? Not to diminish it, but you can do this. Like, I'm just throwing at you what I know you can handle. Get up. Absolutely. Right? So I don't stay on the floor for too long. The floor is cold. I'm popped up. I'm like, I get hit. I'm like, oh, my legs are woozy. And then I get up, I'm like, which one of y'all hit me? Which one of y'all? And then I go. So you are a dad girl. <laughs> you have a daughter. You're beautiful, Naya. I am. I guess I want to find out from you, are there specific lessons and observations that you've made throughout your life that you have zoned in on as super important to get across to your daughter? Um, either because from your personal experience as a, a young man growing up and dating to you, to your marriage life or through lessons taught to you by your mom, are there specific things that you want to make sure she knows? Yeah, one, don't date me when I was younger. That's the first thing because uh, <laughs> I was, uh, you know, whatever. Uh, I had to evolve. Uh, no, but the first one was is your voice is so important. And I think what a lot of women tend to do is they tend to lower their voice. Because they're told that the man is, you know, he's the head of the household and blah, 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 et cetera, et cetera. I didn't grow up with that man in my household. So my mom's voice was always the loudest voice in the house. And that's why I appreciate, you know, women voicing their opinion and saying how they believe and how they feel. There's a double standard for women, right? There's a double standard. When you are loud and opinionated and talk to your voice, well, man, what's wrong with her? Like, why she got an attitude? Why she got a right men can do that and say the most belligerent ignorant stuff in the world and it's okay so my thing with naya is never ever stand behind a man ever you don't have to you can walk right next to that joker right you can walk right next to him that's the first thing and second never ever make let anyone silence your voice mm -hmm. ever i don't care who the man is i don't care how much you care about him how much you love him never let him make your voice where it's non-existent. And the third thing, do not lose yourself in your relationship. Because if you lose yourself in your relationship, you are no longer there. Um, a Mia, who you met, Mia Prout, one of my you know, amazing singers at the Positivity Summit, she has a song that says, I got with you and I lost me. That was the, a verse in her line. You know, I got with you and I lost me. You can't lose yourself in your relationships. You got to be the same Keisha that you are. Now, doesn't mean there's not an evolution. Doesn't mean there's no compromise on both ends. But you can't forget who you are. Absolutely, I, I that resonates with me on so many levels. And too long of a conversation to get into right now because I'm only going to give you guys 15 minutes of now. <laughs> and then 
you can follow him on all his social medias and come back for our summit because we're co creating this community of amazing people that includes him. So um, I guess where I want to go next and close on is your advice. Um, I guess your final thoughts on mindset, on business, on Black Lives Matter, on COVID, on any particular, well, Black <laughs> That's a lot. I mean, you said 15 minutes. I know, I know, I know. I know. 50 minutes on either one. Yeah, we could. We could. So we're, we can talk, we're we can talk about, listen, We can talk about, uh, and this is, uh, I love unpopular opinions. And this is my unpopular opinion. Oh, Lord. So, <laughs> let's, so when it comes to BLM, right, Black Lives Matter, whatever it is, right, understand my, this is my stance. And this is only my opinion, right? The most important part of that movement for me are the words. Black Lives Matter. That's it. That's the most important part because it seems like in this country they don't. Now, the best thing that's happened, right? Because I'm not, I'm not for photo op people, right? We got a lot of photo op people, right? In and out of that organization, outside that organization, we have a lot of people that when it's black and white, they show up like waka waka, let's have a conversation, right? And then they disappear. Then they disappear. And I understand who funds that movement. So I'm not I'm not, I don't follow the crowd, right? I follow the money. So anyway, but the fact that those three words, Black Lives Matter, is on people's t-shirts, that's the most important thing because our kids see it, right? Our kids see it. You are looking at a time that's unprecedented. Never in the history of racial injustice has there ever been this many people organizing around the world to speak out about it. So in that way, this movement is 100% amazing because of the fact when I went to the protest up here in New Jersey, there were 70% non-brown people marching. Young kids saying, no justice, no peace, right? That's what gives me hope for the next generation. All the other stuff behind it, I don't rock with. That's another conversation. Yes, but <laughs> the fact that there are millions of people. There's 50,000 people here, 100,000 people in Australia, a bunch of people here, all over in England, hundreds of thousands, like everywhere. Martin Luther King never got the opportunity to see that happen in the civil rights movement. That civil rights movement didn't even go all the way across America, right? It was contained march. It was, we were in the South. Now, we moved a little bit other places, but it was contained. This is not contained, right? This is everywhere. People are saying to me, all over, and you know, like, all over, like, Cornell, what's going on in your country? Right. That's how you know you have something powerful. So let's take those three words, right? Black Lives Matter. And let's not say silly stuff like all lives matter. Like we're, like it, like we're saying it doesn't matter, right? And understand when people say Black Lives Matter, the only thing they mean Right, so everybody gets who gets butt hurt about that. The only thing they mean is it seems like in this country they don't. That's it. Of course, all lives matter. Of course, Latin lives and police officers and all the all those matter. Of course, it just seems that in America, since we can remember that brown lives don't matter, and that's why we want to bring attention to it. You don't go to the doctor for an ACL surgery and he goes, you know what, I'm going to fix your Achilles. You know why? Because all Achilles matter and all joints matter and all points. You'd be like, no, idiot. It's just my ACL, right? So let's start having more empathy for that cause, okay, and come together because that's what I'm seeing and that's the beauty of it. We're starting to come together. Keep the momentum going because now – the next media thing is coming, right? Now George Floyd is getting, it's getting a little old, right? So now when I was doing lives before, you know, hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of people some talking about race, right? It's a hot topic. But now people are like, okay, it's kind of happened. Don't lose the momentum. This is important. We're, we're going to a different place here as, as human beings. Don't lose the momentum. Let's keep together, right? Let's keep together. Let's keep the momentum going. Let's keep having these convers uh, uncomfortable conversations that hopefully become comfortable as we talk and sit down. And sit. Absolutely. Uncomfortable. We know, but let's keep having them. I completely yeah. agree. Yeah. So how can everybody connect with you? Um, CornellThomas.com or is it Cornell-Thomas? I always forget. Cornell-Thomas.com Cornell and everything on social media is at Cornell Thomas. IG is at Cornell Thomas 34. And if you want to see some crazy stuff, you can find me on TikTok, but 
it gets, oh boy, you're on TikTok. It gets dark there. I I, I mean, it's for it's a it's a acquired taste. All right. <laughs> <laughs> We're excited to have Cornell speak at the 15th Annual Women in Business Summit, you guys. I hope you can join us. Go to WIBSummit.com, WIBSummit.com for all the details. Thank you so much. Oh, wait, tell your friends a great about couple. Web Summit. Like, can we stop half-stepping, ladies? Like, you guys got a million women to organize in New York, right? Can we tell your friends about WIB? Can you pass it along? Could you share it? You want to share the burping cat or you want to share some other nonsense? Why don't we all share this? If 300 strong, powerful, beautiful, intelligent women, women share this, right? That's millions of people that can see it. So stop getting like Big Daddy Kane. Stop half-stepping. There ain't no half-stepping. There ain't no future in front. Start sharing this, please. Because Keisha is doing the Lord's work right now. She oh, is doing what's needed. So okay. share it. Stop being shy. Don't not share it and then see her in the street and be like, oh, hi, Keisha. I support all the stuff that you do. No, you don't. <laughs> Cornell. All right, you guys. We're going to go. Have an amazing weekend. You are my brother. Thank you so much. Do you see why? Surround yourself with people like Cornell. I'll talk to you guys soon. Bye. <laughs>